You have to be. Yeah, I can, Miss Adam. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Adam. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Right. If everybody, good morning, um, everybody, and sorry for the delayed start. Um, welcome to South End uh, Business Partnership Briefing. Um, hopefully, everybody can see me. Okay. Um, this is the first of 2021, and yes, it's obviously still virtual. As I was saying to some others earlier on, that if this had been, you know, like back in 2019, we'd probably be holding this. Sorry, not to just um, make you feel <laughs> sort of cheesed off, but we'd probably be holding this at the Park in Palace or the Cliss Pavilion on this beautiful sunny day and have a massive turnout. We still may have a, a, a good a good turnout because so, we're expecting 70 to 80, but people might be taking their exercise walks for all I know now. But um, certainly welcome to everybody. And we have four presentations for you today. And it's focusing on a digital portals, enabling our economic post COVID recovery. I anticipate that this will run to no more than 10 o'clock the event, okay, at, at maximum. If I could ask you with the potential of 80 people joining, um, 70 to 80, if I could ask you to please mute. We will, as you see, I think already, that um, we will be recording this event. So if you don't want your video camera on, then, you know, please turn it off. Please feel free to use the chat facility. Um, we will try to respond to questions via this as we go through the meeting, or we'll try and take a few by way of chat, if uh, time still allows, in, in a Q&A session, but that will be via the chat facility rather than uh, people actually asking verbally online, okay? Um, the other thing just to mention uh, on the background um, is that on the South End Business Partnership, we currently have 1,400 people registered on our mailing list for the partnership, and you know, those that are on the mailing list do receive our monthly newsletters. So if you do not receive a newsletter by any chance of any of you who, who are on, then by all means, put your email address in the chat saying you would like to be added to the mailing list. OK, so um, that obviously we'll make sure the next one that goes out um, for April, you, you will get just some of my sort of reflections before we move on. I mean, I think in terms of Brexit and EU exit, whichever you want to call it, I mean, the recent South End Business Partnership Executive meeting, in which some of you were were at, um, including um, of the names I spotted coming up was Dan uh, and Councillor Kevin Robinson, for example, um, attended. Um, we, we, we certainly were picking up that there have been, uh, well, hopefully are some teething problems but from business feedback that I've been getting, I've certainly got some feedback from intermediaries, uh, but there are some more, I think, fundamental issues still around that might not be such a quick fix. And, and as a business partnership, we will be very much watching this the executive and continue to track uh, what I would call hope for improvements over the coming months. However, in regard to COVID, um, whilst that continues to present, shall we say, ongoing challenges, we are hopeful that the new roadmap will lessen COVID restrictions, both for us personally and for our organisations, while still maintaining safety for us. I think just to say a brief recap on the roadmap, if you don't mind, as you know, stage one, I mean, was in two parts. The first being the 8th of March, when largely it was a return to education for our young people, which I think generally has been welcomed, although the schools I'm involved with you know, don't underestimate the task. And I know we have education people on today like Anthony McGarrell, and no doubt that's, you know, created a lot of work. And I think a massive big thank you to all teaching and support staff in all educational facilities, and indeed parents, carers of, of young people as well, because it's been uh, quite a challenging time. The 29th of March, um, which we've yet to get to, and as long as nothing changes in the interim, is really, you know, in summary, is a relaxation of the stay at home situation, but you still must stay local. But there are still going to be restrictions on the size of groupings. Um, there will be reopening of outdoor sports facilities. Organised sports can restart. Then there's going to be the stage two, which I think is no earlier than the 12th 
of April, when all shops are allowed to reopen, that includes like the hairdressers, the beauty salons and the spas. And I know, for example, we've got Suzanne from the bid on today, and that's obviously probably been a big focus of our mind at the, the present time and all that are engaged in that. And also restaurants and pub gardens are allowed to serve customers sitting outside. I've just been trying to work that one out for myself, how that's going to work. And um, there are other anticipated relaxations uh, under stage put two, but it, it gets more complicated. So I will press the pause button rather than risk misleading you. And then there's anticipated to be a stage three on the 17th of May and anticipated to be a stage four no earlier than 21st of June. So, you know, it's, it's, it's watch this space, but, but you know, with the stress that everybody stays safe and acts sensibly and considerate to, to other people. Um, in terms of um, coming through on the recovery, um, I just want to mention that there's going to be a, an event called South End Roadmap to Recovery Briefing, which is going to be held on Tuesday the 30th of March, which the council's holding. Tuesday the 30th of March, um, three o'clock to four o'clock. And basically it's an opportunity to hear South End on Sea Borough Council's economic recovery priorities uh, and advice on public health and community safety. And, and certainly um, just to say on that, because I've been involved in other organizations, for example, like Citizens Advice uh, Service, et cetera, and Job Centre Plus, but the um, council and partner organisations have created a working group, which has met for several times already, to look at how best to tackle the borough's economic recovery from COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and the group consists of employees from the council and relevant partner organisations, such as, as I say, Job Centre Plus, Citizens Advice Bureau. And economic recovery is a key priority for the council and one which will be a focus for, for um, you know their budget uh, for this year uh, so the economic crisis and recovery so is made up of people whose roles relate to the following areas which is economic hardship business support and employment uh, commission uh, communication procurement social value commissioning and major de development projects that's just to give you a flavor that that's been they they've been meeting on a regular basis for some while already but there's going to be this this event on the Tuesday the 30th, the fifth, uh, three o'clock, and no doubt maybe one of the uh, one of the council team could put up in the chat the, the possibly the meeting link on that just to emphasise if that's acceptable. Okay, um, in anticipation of these positive uh, steps, um, our focus today's briefing is one of supportive positivity and focusing on utilizing web portals for for what i'd say the furtherance of your business and organization and as i said earlier the title on this is digital portals in enabling our, our economic post-covid recovery um obviously many of us and just like now have used digital connectivity far more than we have done before and quite honestly i, I think very much that it, that it will continue to do so in, in, in an increased measure beyond um, COVID in whatever form COVID restrictions still, still take. There are nevertheless still uh, business opportunities out there and none more so. Um, you may remember that the South End Business Partnership Briefing towards the end of last year, we, we had a presentation on, on you know, South Essex being the place of op optimism opportunity. And we had a presentation on free ports and um, you will have heard that the government, with, with link to the budget, have approved um, eight free ports in England. And one of them is just down the road from us. And that's going to be a free port located around Tilbury Port and DP World. And it's envisaged that this catchy could lead to the creation of some 25,000 jobs overall over a period and unlocking about 400 million pounds of investment across South Essex. So, um, and the, it's anticipated actually that, that in its phased form, it would start being up and running uh, by the end of this year. So on that piece of good news, and there are others as well, um, I, I wonder if I'm now in a position to start the presentations and if I could just get a steer from, um, from Hyder. I think I've seen 
I'll, yeah. uh, the yeah, Adele is on. Yeah, Adele has now joined us, yeah, and Sophie's due to join us any second, so we'll be able to run as normal. As normal, excellent. So as I say to everybody, you, you will have four presentations and feel free to ask questions during them via chat, okay? And um, the presenters will do their best to respond via chat. I think that um, that Sophie, you will have to be taking questions, well, deal with your questions probably by chat before you go, because I think you will be moving on shortly after the presentation. So uh, I think Adele, uh, enough from me and over to you and welcome for Best Growth Hub. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Marie. It's, it's really lovely to be joining everyone this morning. So thank you for the um, chances to, to join in with all of this great, great partnership working that's um, happening. But as I say, it's an absolute pleasure to be here and um, it will be really great to just um, tell you all of the great things that we're actually doing at the Best Growth Hub at present to support with the um, uh, digital support. So um, am I OK to go to the next slide, please? OK, um, it's, it's just a quick um, summary of the um, Best Growth Hub because I feel it's always good to give an, an overview of all of the great work that we've actually done um, to date. There are, there are 38 growth hubs in total um, and I've, over the last year we've actually helped 20,000 businesses um, to date, which is a fantastic achievement, um, obviously, and it's great to see that we have been such a support to all of the businesses out there. There's actually been free um, support, it's impartial advice as well, and it's been in grant scale up and also support, which is most relevant to this um, presentation today um, within the digital skill set. So we have been working with our LAP, um, CELIP, which has um, also given us opportunities to be able to offer um, digital workshops with um, support with uh, Google. So as, as you can see, it's been really great there to actually um, bring in some excellent opportunities, allowing businesses to benefit from the free advice and, and support that we're actually able to signpost them to. Um, if I could go to the next slide, please. OK, and it's just a really nice overview, really, of how how, how does this work for um, the providers and also the Essex um, business. We constantly keep great, great relationships with our support providers and also our uh, business partners in keeping the businesses up, up to date with all of the developments that's actually happening um, within the actual uh, digital uh, skill base um, within uh, this presentation. So the businesses are actually um, given an assessment by our uh, business navigators, which we call a diagnostic. Um, from, from that time spent with uh, the business, the uh, business navigator at the hub is actually able to match the business to the relevant help and also the relevant criteria to help them to upskill in, in the actual uh, digital sphere. So successful schemes that we have been really proud to support um, at, at the moment and offer free. It's been the um, digital boost, um, which I'm sure uh, you might be aware of that. But if not, I don't mind giving a quick overview. Uh, that actually is providing a community of digital expert volunteers to support the charities and, and small businesses through what they call a boost call. So it's one to one support. So it's it's boost workshops, hands-on webinars, and obviously with the way the pandemic has, has been, this is a real um, great support tool for the businesses to actually like develop and grow as a business with free um, digital advice because most of us were only able at that point to communicate through um, di uh, digital means, which was social platforms and obviously social media. So if we could just go to the next one, please. OK, there's also been an excellent um, advancement within our Best Growth Hub, which we're really proud about. Um, during the pandemic, there, there was a lot of um, pivoting where businesses found that the business models that they had were impacted by 
um, coronavirus and they needed to actually um, decide if they needed to pivot into a business model. To help them with that, our scale-up advisor, um, Theo, um, actually uh, decided to, with all of his um, knowledge of scale-ups, he actually pro provided the hub with a proper um, pivot assessment tool. Um, the service is actually uh, fully subsidised and facilitated. So when the business completes the online assessment through the Pivot Assessment Tool, which is available on our website as well now, and I will provide a link to this, but it actually gives inputs um, which are, are reviewed by the qualified business advisors who then issue the meaningful um, recommendations. It's anonymous aggregated data and it's also used to pinpoint the common issues, trends and constraints that will contribute to the development of appropriate ongoing business support programmes. It is then fed back through to the business and I can show you exactly how that's done with the next slide, please. It's a really nice, simple user friendly system, which is actually like a traffic light system and it gives grading and provides a clear illustration of, of where the business appears to be on top and the sub pivoting drivers. So if it actually identifies an area where the business can build on and, and where the business has some way to go to adapt to meet the new requirements, there will be graphs that are actually reported back um, to the business, which is then incorporated in the business plan. And the graph actually provides insight into areas such as market validation, customer engagement, supply chain, financial stability, employment levels, product and service offering, positioning, innovation, and also the um, digital adoption. So that is just really great for businesses in itself to actually know where their areas are to um, pivot by this fantastic in intelligence that the pivot assessment tool allows and also displays the, the information easy and accessible in graphs. So that has been really going down well. Um, it's extremely time and, and cost effective because it's helping the businesses to actually um, work out where, where they need to actually pivot to. The process has been a completely designed to assist the business owners. It's free um, and it's obviously aimed at MDs and, and managements to find the solutions to the dilemmas of what and how they need to adapt to meet the new challenges brought about by the COVID-19 crisis. So I hope, I hope you found that interesting and I'm happy to provide um, a lot more information on that if anyone needs, needs further information. Um, if we could just go to the next slide, please. There's something now which is um, just part of the offering as well that we're also helping to support like within um, the digital sphere and it's news of our event. Um, well, it's actually a three day business festival for businesses that do want to come along and upskill. Uh, there, there will be workshops provided. There'll be thought provoking debates on how how the digital um, sphere has has really really started to come even more into its own um, within the pandemic and also the challenges that businesses are facing to actually like develop their skills like within the digital setting and there is there is a video um, on there if if we would like to play it. I'm hoping this link will pretty much explain it all um, about the show. Thank you.
I'm, I'm happy to um, obviously again provide links um, to, to that video. Uh, it seems to be halting a bit there. <laughs> Oh, thank you ever so much for, for playing that. And that's just really an, a celebration of, of the digital sphere in itself, in the fact that this was meant to be a real life event. Um, obviously through, through um, as everyone, like within the pandemic, we've had to use um, digital skill set to actually provide an amazing virtual event. Um, as you can see, it gives uh, business owners a great chance to interact. So I do hope um, you will actually register and it's completely free to enjoy um, that as well. Uh, so if we could just go on to the next slide, please, and then I can just give more of an overview. It's just really a, a summary of the dates. And as I say, it is going to be the virtual event of the year for businesses, our partners and our providers. It's certainly not the stereotypical um, business owner um, as well. Uh, there's certainly something for everyone even in terms of the workshops. Again, there'll be um, digital workshops and chances to meet the experts and upskill. So, as I say, happy to, pro to provide further information on that as well. Uh, something that is actually running alongside that, if we could just go to the next slide, please, that we're actually extremely proud to be offering. Uh, the business innovation fits within six streams alongside a Nova Award. So you can actually um, apply uh, if you are a uh, digital business or if you are innovating through um, digital, you can actually apply through the Digitech stream. So come along to the festival on the day and obviously apply. And if we could just go to the next slide, please. And this is where the Nova Awards will sit. So this, is, as I say, opens on the day of the EXI show. It's actually commercial success in six streams and how they've also taken into account how ethical the innovation roadmap was and what legacy it will create. So like we're looking for cutting edge um, Digitech. So as, as you can see, here's all the criteria here. Um, again, if you have innovated and you are a business that has innovated through um, digital, uh, again, this this award is is open to you. It's free to enter um, as well. So, so please, um, do apply. And there is also a website for Nova Awards that I will provide details of too. Okay, and I think uh, there's one more slide there. Yeah, just a quick note um, again of the date and uh, the the website here, uh, which is 11th to 13th of May and the actual uh, website address there. So I do hope lots of you will attend and and I do hope you found that interesting and, and a good overview, obviously, of uh, the digital sphere and where where we currently are, are positioning ourselves for business and also our partners. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And if there are any questions, please, please do feel free to to approach me either now or or or, or at an, another time. Thank you very much. Uh, greatly appreciated and um, certainly reflects a lot that it that, that is going on and, and how adapting you've had to be adaptable in terms of the, the COVID social distancing etc in terms of type of events you're doing and certainly I would recommend that people do go all uh, to the website um, as well because there, there are three business um, growth hubs across the lab area and this one covers covers Essex and of course I would say and I know that Adele has said about working with partners and there are key organizations around as well obviously and I'm in danger by mentioning two of them that, that me, I don't mention others but obviously you know the, the ones like Federation of Small Business Essex Chamber of Commerce and I think I, I spotted with the Essex Chamber that they're <clears throat> running an, an importing um, training event um actually on the 27th of april i wish i think it's an all-day training session which is open to members and, and non-members for a different tariff but um so there's a lot of things that are going on 
it, with a lot of other organizations as well in the field. But uh, I would say, you know, with best, feel free to go to the go to the website. Okay. Um, now we will be moving now on to a, another topic. And um, I should have said, I think Adele is, is the business development coordinator. I think I'm, I'm right in saying that at best growth, I'm just to clarify her position there. Right, um, now going on to um, things relating to South End place branding, you know, changing the perceptions of South End very much um, and thinking ahead about, you know, for example, if staycations are going to be the things in the short term, then, you know, making sure we, we're getting our, our messaging right. And uh, at this point in time, I'm delighted to welcome uh, Sophie Gwynn, who I think is Design Communications Manager Hemingway, but correct me if I'm wrong about that detail. So um, <laughs> over to you. <laughs> Thanks, Murray. Um, can, I, can you hear me just to check first? Yeah, your, your video is um, on your chin, basically, just to say, it's your camera. Oh, is that not what you wanted? How's that? <laughs> there, there you are. Okay. Um, but you, have you got slides or here? Yeah. yeah, I'm going to be sharing my screen anyway. I'll just get that up now. Oh, one second. Um, here we go. So yes, thanks Murray. Um, yeah, I'm Sophie, um, I work at Hemingway Design um, and my colleague Wayne Hemingway is here today as well. Um, we've been working on a place branding project for a bit over a year now um, and we're just we're just wrapping it up now. So we're here to share with you the results from that. Um, it's now come into the exciting phase of actually implementation and strategy and hopefully some of you guys getting to use it in your work. Um, we're just going to start by really quickly recapping kind of what a place brand is and what it can do for South End. Um, I can see on the uh, attendees list that some of you will have definitely heard from you, me before, um, but some of you might be completely new to the process. So we're just going to quickly whiz through that as a recap um, before we get on to the, um, the results of the South End project. Um, so firstly, here we go. Uh, what is a place brand? It's a very valid question. Normally when you say the word brand to someone, you instantly think about logos and colours and fonts and that kind of thing. And that is part of a visual brand, but what's more important is the brand um, personality, the brand behaviour and the brand story behind that. Um, so the aim of a place brand for South End is to define an honest but aspirational story for the place. What does South End stand for? What do the people of South End stand for together? What are their values? What are the place's values? And what sets it apart, crucially, from other places? Um, and the aim of this is, um, there's two aims, an, in, an external aim, which is to guide and enhance external perceptions. Um, so kind of as Murray touched on, especially it's an important topic for tourism, but also for attracting inward investment, for attracting talent, um, for business growth. Um, and we do that by consistently telling the same stories of South End. Um, so the way that you change perception. Oh, sorry. Um, by having our actions consistently telling the same story, giving the same message, that's how we start to shift those external perceptions. And then internally, it has another um, effect, which is to influence and enhance the lived experience. Um, for, for the people of South End. And that happens by um, using this place branding to make decisions which are always going to be true to their essence of South End by making decisions that are specifically, you know, accurate to, to the people and the, and the place itself rather than kind of decisions that could be, happen anywhere. Um, and so that's those two benefits. Um, so what we're going to look at today is um, the place brand narrative, which is um, condensed into a set of three core values. Um, those are values that aim to define the personality of South End um, um, really succinctly uh, and honestly, as we said before. Um, those values then um, get put into action by using them to inform decision making. And that's at all levels um, from kind of public sector capital development projects right down to um, what food is served at a placemaking event or um, what um, in startups to invest in, what education programmes to select, um, that ev absolutely everything. Um, 
And so by using these three values to inform decision making, that's how we make sure that all the actions and all initiatives and every activity that happens in South End is properly true to the story of South End. So telling that story again. Um, you can also use it as the basis for new initiatives, for new plans, basically finding ways to tell that story even louder. It can be a starting point and a stimulus for, for new ideas and new activations. Um, and you can test existing initiatives and plans against it um, to ensure that all your activity is always communicating the same message. So it becomes this framework that's for decision making, but it's meant to be kind of a framework that inspires creativity, um, inspires kind of exciting action. It's not at all a kind of constraint. Um, I think, Wayne, do you want to just kind of have a talk about why place branding matters to add to that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, if you, well, first of all, good morning, everybody. And uh, we, we are, we, we're really enjoying working in, in Southend. Um, non, non, been visiting the place for a long time and got lots of friends down there. And um, it's always been a great place, but, but, li but like everything, t you know, towns and cities do have to, and not everybody likes this, but uh, likes this concept, but they do, they are in competition. You know, you, uh, and at the moment, there's a real opportunity because you've got a whole, you've got three generations now who are turning their back to an extent. You know, it's not a, it's not a like a hundred percent of people are saying they don't want to go to Benidorm and Magaluf anymore and that they want to explore more, more their own country and that sustainability, you know, not flying and all of, all of those kind of things and supporting, supporting local businesses. But there's a, there's a, there's a generational shift that way. All the figures, all the research, from, are showing that, and it's a, it's actually a worldwide movement that, that's ha that's happening, um, and, and and you need you know every place needs to what w should want to take advantage of that because if you don't you know you end up having less money ultimately and and and, and no jobs and then you lose your talent and and I'm sure everybody on here knows all of that, and if you think about you know nothing nothing ever lasts forever and 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 if you've got to think about your town as being, if you think about it as a brand, you know, who, who would have thought, uh, I don't know, 20 years ago, that Woolworths, you know, just wouldn't, wouldn't exist? Who would have thought that, and you still need the things that Woolworths sell, it's not as if they, they're selling something that we don't need anymore. Um, BHS go, Topshop, who would have thought five years ago, that well, even less than that, that Topshop would completely disappear from our high streets. And it's not, it's not that, it's not just that everybody is shopping online. You know, Primark and, 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 and others are, uh, don't, don't even sell online and, and they're absolutely thriving and, and, and will take record figures again when, when they get open. It's all about being relevant uh, to, to the gen... To, and, and, and the other thing is that Woolworth, BHS and Topshop haven't, haven't been closed by high rents, uh, by the government. They've been closed by us people. We're the ones who have chosen not to shop in them because they're not relevant anymore and it's exactly the same um, with it's exactly the same with a town or a city if you if you cease to become as relevant to a, a broad as possible amount of people um, then then you'll suffer it's 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 as simple as that so so that's what a place brand is all about because south end is already a brand remember it's it's an amazing brand um, but brands also like sophie said live by the actions that they do everybody you know you and an, an example is nike people don't buy well only very shallow people would buy nike because it's got a tick on the side or because or because it or because it does um a, a nice um advert with a famous star or yes there are people who who will respond to that but the majority of people who stick with a brand are because because of the actions that it does so the nike 5k run the fact that the fact of all that it does in terms of thinking about community, giving back to football and all of that kind of stuff. And of course it takes as well, because, because that's, what, that's what businesses do. But it, everything is about the actions. And, and basically this is what a, a place brand can do. It, what it isn't is about a nice flashy logo, although you, although you have got some nice graphics at the end of it, but that's, you know, that's, the easy, that's the easy bit. Uh, it, it's not about saying we're a great town with lots of nice people and a great history. Because everywhere has got nice people and everywhere has got a history. It's about picking out the, the, the proper essence of what makes South End unique. What are the special, the really special things about it? And by God, you have got lots of uniqueness 
and so much and so much specialness about it which I don't know Sophie are you are you going to go through any of that on this yeah. you are so have, have I explained enough or yeah and if anybody's obviously got questions well I don't know if we're allowed to do questions at the end or not that's up for yeah, Murray is it a couple of minutes for questions yeah all right so I, I'm going to uh, go quiet now <laughs> thanks Ray. um so um and why? Sorry, just to come in, Murray here. If, if questions could be put through the chat, that would be helpful. Okay, thanks. And uh, Murray, and do we and do we then answer them by chat, or are we going to answer them verbally at the um, end? You, you could you could answer verbally. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Cheers. Yes. Um. So as I said at the beginning, this has been over a year project. Um, it obviously should have been shorter, but something happened in the middle that we don't need to go into. Um, but this is just a really brief overview of how we've got here. Um, it's been a kind of a really robust research and engagement um, project. We've it's spoken to hundreds of brilliant people, um, as well as analysing data from the 2050 engagement. So that's thousands of people, um, uh, and just kind of just hearing from as many different voices as, as we can over the past year. Um, and now we're going to go into the brand narrative. Just to say before I start, um, there's a few um, documents that will be circulated after this meeting to give a bit more context. So firstly, there's one that is kind of explains place branding even better and gives some kind of best practice examples um, to make it kind of um, easier to understand. Um, and also the, the, this brand narrative document and some of the, um, some of the research and evidence for it. Um, will also be available to you. So I'm just going to whiz through the kind of top line stuff now, but there is obviously a lot more um, that is available to anyone that wants to have it um, afterwards. So three core values for Southend. Um, this is, uh, these are the three. So, and I'll explain them in a minute um, as we go through. So core value one, breaking ground and making waves. Um, this is about um, Southend as a place that's the start of the line. It's not the end of the line. Um, it's about a place where big ideas and new approaches, they start from the edge lands of the Thames estuary and they spread across the rest of Essex to London, across the UK and the wider world. It's about Southend as a place where exciting stuff happens, where stuff starts. Um, you know, historically, the, obviously things like Echo Radio, but also um, culturally, um, music scenes, fashion scenes, creativity, um, businesses start in Southend. Um, it's about repositioning it as kind of a place where things happen rather than a place where things gravitate to, taking away that old narrative that's been around, that, that, is, that is based in fact, but is kind of potentially getting tired now that stuff happens in, that, you know, that Southend is kind of a place that comes after London. It's not, it's a place where stuff starts. Um, it's a place that pushes boundaries. Um, it's a place that um, uh, has a potential beyond limits. Um, and it's a place that's kind of about breaking ground and stepping away from the norm and celebrating the alternative, celebrating difference, um, forgetting the beaten track. Um, it's about embracing that kind of alternativeness, whether it's a subculture, whether it's an alternative way, whether it's an alternative approach to um, the kind of education spe specialties that happen in South End, whether it's um, a different music scene, um, a different, um, you know, water sports that you're into, whatever it is. It's a place that's a, that's a kind of celebrates the alternative um, culture and a place where exciting stuff happens. Um, these are just some words that associate with that. Pioneering, originators, instigators, creators, um, unconventional in a good way, um, maybe subversive occasionally, um, a little bit um, ahead of the curve and visionary. Um, the next one, individual united. Um, so this is a place that um, celebrates individualism and that can act, the way that that can actually bring people together. Obviously, this is a place brand for the whole of South End Borough, um, and as we know, that that includes a lot of different places. The experience growing up in South End Central might be really different to the in, experience growing up in Lee, um, and it's really different to the life you might live in Shrewsbury, and that's fine and that's brilliant. Um, whether you're, the main thing that you're passionate about is is stilettos or whether the main thing you're passionate about is punk. It doesn't matter because those things can coexist beautifully in Southend. Um, so it's about celebrating those kind of individual passions, um, but then everyone being united by just the love of Southend itself. That's something that really came across in, in our engagement speaking to people is that no matter your opinion on where the world is going or, or what you want to do with your time, 
everyone just is proud. So many people are proud to be South End and proud to be Essex, and it's about celebrating that. Um, it's also about celebrating the kind of working class heritage that still exists um, um, because of the history of South End, of kind of being um, willing to get things done, roll your sleeves up, not really wait necessarily for kind of expecting help, but, but just make things happen. Um, it's about kind of being, again, the instigators and the people that do stuff. It's about um, uh, kind of, uh, yeah, just, just, um, just, yeah, rolling your sleeves up get, and getting things done is what I'm trying to say. Um, so people that are, might be completely different, places that are completely different, neighbourhoods and, and life experiences that are completely different, but everyone being united by celebrating that difference and by being proud of, of their place. Um, so this is these are the associated words. So it's about being honest and authentic. Um, but I can definitely say that that's another thing that we get from speaking to people in South End is you don't get a lot of beating around the bush, um, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, there's definitely this kind of DIY ethos, like I'll just do it myself because I, I, I can get things done. I heard a brilliant anecdote about um, South End at some point having um, the most second-hand car dealership in the UK at some point in the in a few decades ago, and I think that kind of says it all. You know, it's about just getting stuff done um, and, and and being kind of direct um, and passionate. Um, it's also about being bold. It's about that potentially the kind of conventional ethicsness um, of of being a bit kind of of being really straightforward about being honest uh, and about not being afraid of of sharing your opinion and sharing your views, which is definitely something to be celebrated. Um, just South End is kind of a no-nonsense place. Uh, the third one is we call Choose Your Own Adventure. Um, this is about South End as a place that's more than just um, Europe's longest pier. Um, it's more than just um, a coastline. Um, it's more than just an estuary. There are so many different things going on in South End. I mean, as someone that works in places all over the UK um, doing place brands like this, I can tell you that everyone wants to be able to say that their place has something for everyone. It's not necessarily true everywhere else, but in South End, it really is. It is ludicrous how much stuff there is on offer here to do. Um, if you want to spend a day in the arcade with fish and chips and some cockles, then you can do that if that's what your holiday wants to be. If you want a holiday where you're going to the UK Dive Centre, doing some windsurfing in the day, going to the museum in the afternoon and then finishing up um, with um, uh, music at the railway, then that's what you can have. If you're into arts and culture, you've got absolutely loads of it. If you're into exercise and sports and leisure, there's absolutely loads of it. If you want to walk in the countryside, if you want to walk on the coast, if you want to walk on an estuary, if you want to be in the river, if you want to be in the North Sea, it's just about kind of always always remembering and always talking about South End in more than one way, making sure that um, not just in terms of tourism, but kind of in terms of um, culture as well, that just to kind of always remember to push that, that there's just so much going on. It's never one dimensional because it's not a one dimensional place. Um, it's the idea of, especially what we were talking about was kind of um, staycations this year. It's a really different kind of getaway. This isn't your normal seaside experience. Um, so just the associated um, bits with that. Um, culture through the ages, put a well to pump. Um, uh, a place of healthy amusement. Um, that's actually what the word I believe curzel means. It's about it's about healthy amusement. So it's kind of celebrating. Kind of um, it's about the fact that just wanting to be entertained it, it is fine, and there's joy in that. Um, that having something for everyone. Uh, One thousand five hundred years of seaside stories, celebrating that brilliant history and the rich heritage that that, that is in South End. Um, and South End is a home of writers, artists, musicians, so many creative minds, so many cultural figures. Um, it's really impressive how much kind of um, energy, creativity and culture there is um, underpinning everything that we do, which is a massive asset, of course, to businesses as well. And so many different businesses, there's so many innovators, there's um, thriving different sectors um, and different forms of education. Whatever you want to do, I've already said it, there is really something for everyone in South End, and you guys can officially now claim that. Um, Sorry, just get rid of that. So this is what this is what we call the brand filter. This is just everything. Obviously, I realise it's too small to read right now, but this is everything succinctly on one page. This is what becomes that decision-making framework that I was talking about, um, uh, where we take a new idea, take a new initiative, and just kind of run it past these values, run it through like a filter. Is this thing I'm thinking about doing? Does that does that communicate the breaking ground and making waves? Does it communicate kind of South End as a starting point? 
does it say individual united? Is it about celebrating differences? Is it truly, is it, does it have an element of ethics to it? Is it straightforward? Is it um, honest? Um, is it um, easy for everyone to understand and accessible? Um, choose your own adventure. Does it talk about more than just one thing? Is it, is it embracing South End as a place where there's loads of different things to do? Um, so they use, that's the kind of questions that you use when you're putting the brand filter into action. Um, and this is your kind of um, Bible page of uh, everything all on one page, really neatly, our empowered project summed up in one thing. Um, so then the next stage is translating this into a visual identity. As Wayne said, that's kind of the easy bit, but it's also really nice to have. Um, it means that when we're talking about Southend and for everyone that wants to buy into it and become a part of that place brand, to have um, a really great way of communicating the South End um, that in itself communicates these values. Um, so I'm just going to quickly whiz through that. I don't want to take up too much of your time. And you can have the full um, kind of brand guidelines book is going to be available at the end of this week. It goes into way more technical detail than I can understand about design. Um, but here we go. So that's the, this is the word mark, uh, or the logo, as you might want to call it. As you can see, it's just South End. We've lost the South End on sea. Um, that doesn't mean that the council has or anything. It just means that for this communication, it's just South End, straight down the line, no faffing around. Um, South End's what people call it, so that's what we're going to call ourselves. Um, as you can see, it's a really um, bold word mark. It's really simple. There's no serifs. There's no extra bits on any of the letters. It just does exactly what it says. It kind of looks a bit like a stamp, I like to think. It's like, yes, this is South End. We're claiming it. Bosh. Um, here's a colour palette for you. As you can see, it's pretty broad and it's really fun. Um, there's obvious um, references there. You've got the greens of the, the countryside, you've got the blues of the water, um, you've got the sandy colours, and then those kind of bright colours that pop, that reference the kind of uh, uh, um, amusements and, and fun, and that they're kind of arcade colours, I like to call them. Um, and then a really bold, simple, again, typeface. Um, it really stands out. It's punchy. Um, it um, does what it says on the tin, just like the people of South End. People, I don't know if people do what they say on the tin, but you know what I'm trying to say. Um, and so this is just um, kind of, I'm going to show you a few ways that they can um, combine together. Um, we've also got this um, it's a tear device. Um, so it's kind of celebrating, again, you can, when it come, you'll come together in a minute, but it's kind of about South End as, as, as lots of different parts forming a whole. And you can also see these lines on the, on the left, and this kind of reference the coastline a bit in some applications. So if we go here, this becomes kind of background patterns that can be used for posters and things um, with all those different parts, all those different aspects of South End, those different colours referencing the different parts coming together uh, and communicating about South End as a whole. Um, as you can see, if with that choose your own adventure one top right, that's where that little tear device, it kind of maybe looks like a coastline. Um, it also um, references... Um, to me, it kind of talks about like, you know, when you have posters on posters and the parts of them rip away um, and you're kind of revealing what's underneath. Um, and it also, um, it kind of, it isn't polished, it isn't perfect because South End can in some ways be a little, not rough around the edges, but like it has that kind of, that honesty and that authenticity and that grassroots-ness about it that, that isn't perfect and it isn't polished. And so that's, that's celebrating this. Um, we've got a couple of um, gradients that can be used in patterns, and again, that's, this is just showing how they can be applied um, to kind of um, uh, advertising uses. Um, now, some fun ones. Um, this is how it could look at a kind of editorial layout um, using that pattern device um, and combining those bold colours so that so that the, the, the south end this comes across to me when I when I look at these pages I instantly see sunshine I instantly see grass and, and fun from that pink um, suggested for some banners um, there's a nice big billboard um, south end choose your own adventure I mean that makes me want to go windsurfing um, kite surfing so, so embarrassing that's kite surfing um, and then we've just got a few more as a digital application because there is a um, updated Visit South End website coming as part of this project. Um, some little social media icons, um, and then Instagram stories and posts, um, just as a final idea. So there you have it. That's the visual. I know I whizzed through that, but I just, um, as I said, you can have it all to look at in your own time. Um, but um, 
for some people the, the design detail is really interesting and for some people it's just um, not so interesting so I don't want to rest on that too much um, but here it is this is this is the kind of main um, word mark for South End with that tad device um, suggesting the, the many layers um, the jagged line suggesting the coastline and those kind of colors that are talking you know all of always more than one thing this talks about land and the sea um, I think that's it from me um, I can't see the chat, so I don't know if we've got any questions. Okay, but, okay. Sorry, Murray, can I also just say that if, if anyone has any um, questions afterwards or wants any more information, they can also um, email culture uh, culture and tourism at South End as well, um, and they've got all the, all the extra details. Okay, fine. No, thank you very much indeed. I appreciate you fast-forwarded through that. We're a little bit behind at the moment. Thank I've you. been watching the questions coming up now i'm just thinking on the hoof here that um wayne are you going to be around towards the end of the meeting still and if, then you can pick up verbally on those questions in the chat i've got to go on, i've got to go on to something at 10 well at really quarter to really i've got a i'm giving okay. a talk at 10 to are 10. are you able to be looking i know that alison's kindly responded i think to louise uh, no um on the various things i think tracy as well are there any things that you would like to pick up on those questions there, Wayne? I'm just quickly looking through them now. Um, I mean, the Theo, for example, says there's no mention of cultural diversity. Um, that's, the, that's, the, that's the whole of the individual United. It's celebrating diversity. And different yeah, that's, to that's totally yeah. about diversity. Yeah. Yeah. You, you don't have to mention the word because if you do it, you, 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 there's a, you know, it's implicit in that all, all the way through. Yeah. The other, the other one was from Anthony about young people being engaged in this, Anthony McGarrell, about young people being engaged in this process. Um, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we're, we're not that daft. As, I mean, I'm being a, being a blunt answer, but we're, of course we're not that daft not to talk to young people. I mean, of course. And, and, and were they and were they in the process? Were they in the process? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So we, we've had um, we we've done a lot of engagement through kind of um, cultural and creative networks like um, concrete culture and metal, and so they were able to give us access to um, those those desired young people and, and youthful voices. So yeah, definitely been involved. And also, we worked hard on when we did you know when we did. This, any survey engagement that we making sure that we got to you know all age groups working hard on that so yeah yeah we're not we're not um we know that young people are the hardest to get to but they've, they've had their say in this yeah and hope and hopefully it comes across as quite youthful yeah no it, it does there was, it was a question i think from emily saying love the colors and how's it and how it looks Etc. Etc. But how will you ensure? So I don't know who the U is. It's probably the maybe council as well. But but how will you ensure businesses who identify as lead based or in other areas feel as though they are their identity applies to them? That's an interesting one, isn't it? Well, yeah. That's that's that. I mean, it, because that, that's the difficulty of having a borough that is also the name of the town. Um, uh, we, as I've kind of, as I, we've talked about through through the narrative, this aims to be something that that really speaks to everyone in Southend, whether that is in Lee or anywhere else. Um, so, but this is Southend. This 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 word mark is for Southend Borough. So you know that Lee it is part of Southend Borough. So so that's how it, that's how the leanness comes in. Um, obviously, you know we we can't really make a different logo for for. Um, every part of Southend, unfortunately. And, and in yeah, in I think you talked somebody was somebody there's talking in terms of the management of it. Well, yes, I mean, we we go, you know, we not that we'll not come to South End again, but but, you know, our our job is done when 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 this is delivered and when the website and everything is up. And but but, but obviously we leave a we leave a, a, a you know, what what a book of of how to use this and also but it is ultimately down to the town itself on how it mm. you know or, the, the management of it is really important some when you see towns and cities that really um come together cohesively and and all use it it can be very powerful you know you you yes. look at how 
Amsterdam, and, and just well, like we could give loads of examples of where it's been very strongly used. York is an example where we've worked recently, where it's kind of so cohesive that you you can you can tell that the, that the city is together and moving in the same direction. But that's not what we can. That that's you know that that is down to, and it, it, you can't throw it back to the council either. It's not just down to the council. You know, it's no, down no. to it, it, it's more down to the people and on this zoom and on this team's meeting and and everybody else who's got a business in the town um that ultimately every single society business leisure organization club um foundation whatever um they're the ones that promote they're the ones that promote a place and the and i always believe that the council is there as an enabler that's all yeah, and 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 this and this is a tool that enable. This is another. This is another en enabler. But it, ultimately, it's down to a, a place is, a place's cohesiveness is down to how it marches, to, whether it marches together or whether it doesn't. And we mm. can't. We no. we all we've done is given some tools to allow that. Okay, I th I'll have to press the pause button in the nicest possible way on that. Thank you, Wayne. Um, just to say that you know, as Wayne's implying, it, it is a collective. Um, utilization of this and 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 don't view it as a council initiative this very much came out of actually, actually initially south end business partnership place marketing group in which colette uh, bailey and jackie dallin moore were also involved and therefore we do need to move this forward in a way that works for the whole the whole of the town including the other component parts the, the other but uh, other um, areas within the town so I know Alison's been heavily involved on this uh, with the council as well. So um, certainly we'll make sure that this is used in the most broad way that it can possibly be done so that it can be utilized by businesses and other organizations. And um, I think we've got other responses going on, which, um, and thank you. Um, I think it was Louise about the driest weather and the in the UK and and I think Tracy was about more friendly um, affordable places to stay so we'll bear those things in mind I'm sure Alison will pick pick up on those as well so I must move on now and say thank you to Sophie and Wayne a big thank you on that and and move on to our next presentation which is Adam Schultz who's a data analyst in, op in operational performance for South End Council which is about using smart south end data to benefit your businesses and an organization adam over to you uh, thank you very much um good morning everybody um so i'm going to talk a little bit about um a uh, data platform we have called smart south end um, i'm gonna try and share my screen um assuming teams plays up there we go So, um, can you guys see it yet? Yeah, yeah okay, yeah, fantastic, yeah. thank you. So this is the Smart South End uh, website. Um, and all it is, is a place that we can um, openly share data and essentially acts as a central location for evidence-based data to use for commissioning or funding bids and to encourage investment, basically. Um, now, on Smart South End, there are three types of data available, um, which I'll go into a bit more detail, but um, they are raw data, which we've got in the form of data sets. Um, now, I've got these preloaded so that um, I don't have to wait for any page to load. So hopefully that should speed things up a little bit. When you open up data sets, you bring up a page of defined filters, essentially. Um, you can look at what data is available. So if we look at population, that will bring up all the raw data that is available for population. And um, assuming we click the top one, which is the population estimates for South End on Sea, you'll be able to download the raw data for that. And obviously you can use that in your own work, however you see or want to do, basically. Um, that's more or less it for the actual data sets. Um, what we do with that is we transform it and visualize or analyze it further. So we have some and uh, some visualized data in the form of online interactive tools and maps. So if we take one of the online interactive tools, which 
takes you onto this page. These are the tools that are available at the moment. Um, just to sort of preface, this is constantly being um, developed and new things are being added all the time. Um, so uh, we actually have some quite exciting pieces in the work, which are uh, pieces of work that we're currently working on. I'll talk on, I'll touch on that right at the end. Um, this is the um, IMD deprivation map. Um, and allows you to interact with it. You can change the age groups you're looking at, the level of detail you want to look at, and so on. Um, and it's all sort of relatively interactive. You can hover over things, zoom into the map, and so on. Um, some of the tools are more or less interactive depending on um, what the actual tool is. Um, we also have um, maps available as a product. So this is the, the maps page from the home page. Um, and again, I'm going to look at the deprivation um, just so that we can see what it is. Um, but this is a index of multiple deprivation 2019 map. Um, and it shows the areas of um, South End in the most deprived um, LSOAs. So you can see sort of roughly what you'd expect to see. Um, but may be useful for any sort of um, investment bids or looking to open sort of uh, businesses and such. Um, the last type of data that we have available is annualized, annualized data, uh, which actually forms part or mostly part of our JSNA, uh, which is the Joint Strategic Needs Assessment. Um, but as part of that JSNA, there are lots of um, components or different chapters of uh, JSNAs that have been published, um, such as these. I've actually picked out one to go through, which is the English as an additional language component. Um, and specifically, what this data has come from is the um, school census data. And it's looking at where English is an additional language, um, but it actually goes into some quite lower level detail and looks at what kind of percentage is um, EAL. So we can look at what sort of additional needs those um people in those areas have um and further down it actually looks at what those uh primary locate primary languages are in different localities and different um geographies sort of lower down basically um so it means we can sort of tailor any needs to um, a specific area based on what the top languages are or how much help is needed within those areas um so those are the generally the three types of sort of data that's available. Uh, I'm just going to pop back to the home page and actually talk about sort of what's new. Um, obviously, over the last year or so, COVID's been quite a big impact on um, development of this site. Um, but we're starting to see new products be developed now. So we have a what's new section, uh, which gives us an indication of new things that have been added over the last period. Um, so if you were to keep an eye on this, you'd be able to see sort of new products and new pieces come in as and when they come through. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about is the fact that most of the work on here at the moment has been loosely health related. Uh, but we've got quite an exciting piece of work coming up where we're talking about um, economic point of view, uh, which is almost at a point of being ready to publish, though isn't quite there yet. Um, just to give you an indication of what we have, I've got this screenshot of the, um, oh, you can't see that screenshot because I haven't shared that part. I will reshare that for you. Um, but we've got a screenshot of a product that we're hoping to launch on Smart South End in the very near future. Um, so sort of watch this space, I guess, a little bit on things that are coming for it. Um, but as I said before, this is um, the traffic movement of different types of vehicles and the sort of change over a certain period of time. Um, so we'd be able to look at different vehicles coming in and out of South End and what that or how that looks over a period of time. Um, so we get an indication of something like seasonal variants and, and so on. Um, that should be coming, I say fingers crossed, within the next month or so. Um, hopefully sooner, but just as a rough estimate. Um, lastly, 
on Smart South End, there are a few. Uh, sorry, I'm just resharing that to go back to the, um, the actual web page. Um, there's a few sort of contact us pages as well. Um, so you can contact us to um, request anything or you can get involved. Um, the initial aim of Smart South End was for it to be um, collaborative with different um, people across the borough. Um, so if there is something that you know you feel like would be beneficial to see or you want to get involved in some of the development or the uh, products that are available, uh, feel free to get in contact with us uh, and we look forward to working with you. That's all I have now. Um, Great. No, thank, thank you, Adam. That's, that's very helpful. I appreciate you you're showing us sort of the more visual bits that you think will be re relevant to, to our audience. And I'm picking up on a comment from Vince, who says these are some fantastic data sets. I'd love to get these into the hands of our residents in real time, real location by virtualizing using AR on their phones. Adam, we should talk, exclamation mark, if you haven't seen that one. Um, and um, I don't know if Vince wants to put up his email address or whatever on that to enable enable that connectivity, or whether you, you uh, Adam, have got put it, can put in the chat the contact details. If I'm not trying to set you up for too much, Adam. <laughs> no, that's fine. Thank you. I'll put my contact details in the chat in a moment, uh, and I'll put the team inbox as well, um, so that sort of anybody who needs to contact us, feel free. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, thanks, Vince. I can see you've just put yours in there as well. OK, great. Thanks. Thanks a lot. And I know it's something that I think I would encourage people to visit, um, you know, periodically throughout the year, because you're obviously working through various things, aren't you, uh, as well? And I mean, if you do get something further, then by all means, say, let Hyder or Susan know. Um, and then we'll put it in the monthly newsletter that there's a, a, a sub data set or whatever you call it, a visualization that is helpful to the business. We're not just about business community, we're about education and support organizations as well. You know, we want to help them. So if there is something you think is new, then we'll gladly put it in there. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Okay, moving on, and uh, finally but not least, um, idea.org UK, uh, Polly Morgan, and I know we've we've met up in in the past, and I'm sure there'll be some people that will be familiar with the organisation. But it's something I think is really relevant to both individuals and businesses and their employees. And uh, Polly, I can see your name coming up, and I can see you now. Um, Welcome. I, I think you're showing a due course a video and then then just talking, aren't you, as well? Yeah. I am. Yeah. Thank you, Murray. Thank okay. you, everyone, for having me today. Um, I'm really excited and happy to be here. Um, so I'm the programme director of Idea Foundation, which is the charity that runs the Inspiring Digital Enterprise Award, which is known simply as Idea. Um, I have got a video that I was going to share with you. It's just two and a half minutes. So I wonder, Hyla, if you could play that video and then I will talk a bit more about idea, highlight some of the key points and explain how businesses are using it. Oh, I haven't got any sound on the video. Apologies, either. that's my fault. I'll come, <laughs> give me just a sec. <laughs> okay. Just close that video down. Apologies, it's with me just a second. Huge apologies, uh, Polly. I should now yeah. hopefully be able to share now. All right, if not, I can do my speaking first and then we'll do the video after. We need digital skills. IDEA is here to help. We have loads and loads of free modules you can do anywhere, anytime you get online. You can use them to develop new skills, learn about useful stuff on a range of topics, or build on knowledge you already have. It doesn't matter what device you use, 
Idea works on smartphones, tablets, laptops and desktops. The shortest modules help you to get to grips with something new in less than half an hour, often even less. Our courses, Digital Badges, are set up so that you can stop and start them whenever you like. The Bronze Award Badges are for beginners in any topic. All of us are beginners in some things. The Silver Award Badges are for people who've already mastered the basics. All of our digital badges fit into one of our five curriculum categories, designed to help, inspire, and equip the digital citizens, workers, makers, entrepreneurs, and gamers of today and tomorrow. Bronze is like a pick and mix sweetie shop. You can click and collect individual badges whenever you like. You can also do them to complement whatever you currently need. Lots of people are doing enough to win the bronze award and a growing number of digital stars are collecting 50 or more bronze badges and becoming idea bad champions. Silver is based on stories and scenarios known as quests. You have to solve puzzles and take on challenges to progress through the levels in each category. Foundation level sets you up. When you complete foundation, you unlock access into activation. After you have completed activation, you unlock access into the most challenging level, resolution. You can use idea on your own or in teams and classes. It's fun and flexible. And whether you're using it to enhance your prospects on the job market or as part of a lifelong learning, idea helps you invest in you. Thanks, Isla. Um, so yeah, IDEA is a programme that helps people of all stages and ages around the world to develop their digital and enterprise skills and discover new talents on the website, idea.org.uk. So on the site, we offer lots and lots of different bite-sized interactive modules on a range of topics that we create with industry experts and exciting, innovative employers. IDEA works on any device, anywhere you can be online, and it's free to learners everywhere. IDEA rewards learners with a digital badge and points for every module that they complete. As soon as a learner achieves their first IDEA badge, they can also download, print, and share a portable record of achievement. So we're finding more and more people are sharing these on LinkedIn um, as well, which is really exciting to see. Um, when you've collected enough points and badges, on IDEA, you will unlock either a bronze, silver or gold award certificate. The modules are already gamified throughout too, and this helps to boost motivation. So people want to collect more digital badges, win more points and unlock more awards. Um, we launched the bronze award in January 2017. And since then, more than 7 million of our IDEA badges have been achieved by learners around the world. We're currently averaging 1,000 new learners signing up to use IDEA and 7,500 badge completions on IDEA each day, which my colleague worked out yesterday is now roughly one badge is completed every 10 seconds, um, which is kind of mind blowing to us because <laughs> we're a very small team um, and we really kind of didn't expect the project to get such traction so early on. Um, so we're currently focusing on supporting our growing user base as best as we can, and we're creating new opportunities for them through new badges and experiences. A key development that we're working on this year is the creation of the Gold Award, which will be the most advanced level on IDEA to date. Having the digital badges really enables you to showcase your skills, and so businesses are using IDEA to support their employees or themselves um, to help them develop these digital skills. And it's you know beyond the essentials for digital literacy, you can also learn about digital marketing, growth hacking, and social media for business too. Um, so you can register on the platform as well as an organization or somebody that organizes a group of learners, whether that's your employees or, or a group of people that you're working with. Um, that enables you to keep track of their progress. And so some larger organizations are tracking different cohorts across different branches and there's some nice friendly competition going on where they've got kind of team leaderboards up on who's got the most points or badges and, and who get who can get the awards first. Um, so yeah, more and more businesses are recognizing idea on candidate CVs as well for job applications. Um, 
it's often that people are learning on idea it's it's self-led so it, it's a great way to identify people who have really kind of I guess to take Sophie's words uh, rolled up their sleeves and got on with doing their own sort of self-development learning new skills um so conscious that we've still got um only 10 minutes left and there's still going to be question time I, I will leave it there for now I'll put a link to idea in the chat and my email address and anybody that wants to find out more um please reach out to me I'm, I'm very happy to talk to you more about it That's fine. Um, you know, we're probably going to be light, light on the question time anyway. So, um, you know, feel free to mention anything else you wanted to, um, Polly, um, if, 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 if you wanted to. Um, but uh, I, I know you've been having conversations as a result of things I've been involved in. And, uh, and I think without, you know, necessarily you want to go into detail now, I think you even, you've had conversations with Southend Adult uh, community college as well haven't you uh, as well about utilizing um your opportunities certainly i mean you it's very much hasn't it uh, uh gone into the the business sector and for employees are you able to just give any more examples on that at all yeah sure thanks murray um so idea is being used um in lots of asda branches um as well so asda have kind of latched onto it and seen it as a great way to help their employees develop their digital skills so they're giving employees time out of their day at work where they can use specifically to learn skills on idea and they're able to keep track of that as i explained um through our management system and they're doing a really really great job actually at recognizing different employees as um, achievements on idea um Oh, I've just seen the question. Yes, I will share the link to the video as well. Um, yes, and great to show it to students who are in schools too. Um, teachers can also use the management system as well. And there's an extra level of um, functionality in there that enables them to help reset passwords for students in their class as well. That's a problem that we identified last year at the start of lockdown with people going remotely. Um, yeah, so businesses are recognizing idea more and more on candidate CVs and actually using it themselves. It's, it's totally free to use. Um, so I'd be really, really keen to, for you guys to sign up and get started um, and let us know. We're, you know. we're always looking for feedback and we've built idea very much. You know, we're a very small team. And I think one of the reasons that we've been so successful so early on has been the way that we listen to and kind of really create change idea create new features um as a result of the people that are using idea and what their needs are great okay well thank you very much indeed polly and great to see you again and thanks for your time today appreciate it okay right um keeping an eye on on time um i've been looking at the the questions coming coming through and i know some people are, are, are dropping off uh, currently so it's getting this the end of other people's commitments um, I think I know early on uh, Theo asked a question and I'm not sure he's still on because I think he I saw him listed as dropping off but he asked a question about the Freeport and um, whether it did include South End and the, the, the airport when that's obviously back up running again uh, and also Shoebury. I think that to be, to be honest is something the the magic sort of circumference area is very close to South End and might include some parts, but but not others. But don't take me as the expert on that. I think that's something being being evaluated at the moment. But certainly there will be opportunities, yes, and um, not least the, the job opportunities and the supply chain opportunities that will go with Freeport because there are many tax advantages being within the, the, the Freeport area. Um, on various fronts without going through them all now. So um, something we will identify as to um, the opportunities for South End being on the periphery, shall we say, of that area. Um, I probably don't want to invite necessarily councillors and officers to comment because I think we have the wonderful thing called PERDA at the moment where um, they are inhibited to comment, but um, at the present time on various things but uh, so um, rely on me to make, make sure that's not overlooked okay and if, if we learn something more by all means between our meetings we can put something in the newsletter okay 
So, um, so Jan and um, Hilo, is there anything else you want me to say other than I'll say about the next next meetings, etc.? I think most of the questions seem to have been answered in the chat. Um, and and, and uh, there was one question that Terence asked about the new branding and how that can be used within the marketing of businesses. But unfortunately, that team have had to leave. So, uh, but we will be sharing information that, that specifically says that um, with, with the uh, participants and the wider audience. So you will, um, you will have access to that. And then if there are any questions, then I think Alison shared the email address uh, in the chat as well, if you have any questions about it. But okay, other than that, right. I think everything's been, been covered really yeah. in the chat. That's good. Thank you for your confirmation. And thank you to yourself, Heiner, and, and Sojan for your, your efforts on this. OK, I, I think all I'd say in conclusion is, you know, please be ambassadors for conveying onwards uh, what you've heard today. Um, you know, mention to a friend, mention to a colleague, mention to an employee, mention into your supply chain businesses as well about some of the things you've you've heard about. And especially if you're an intermediary that deals with clients, whether you've been banking, you know, accountancy, legal or whatever, then, you know, please, please mention these things. And um, the next meeting for the briefing is the 17th of June. I, I'm feeling that um, we may still be virtual, <laughs> more than likely still be virtual for that. Um, it may involve maybe a focus on the reinvigoration of the high streets. Um, possibly, but we'll, we'll, we'll look at that. The one after that is the 16th of September, which may be on the cusp of being face-to-face, -face, but it may well have to wait face-to-face -face until the final one, of the, which I think is planned for the 25th of November. So we may all be getting together then more face-to-face -face and there'll be networking, et cetera, et cetera. But if there's anything else you'd like us to do as topics, and you know, feel free to feed in if there's another way of running this feel free to feed in i know that you know there's the opportunity on certain setups to do breakout rooms and all that but um we try and keep the the format simple and appropriate for today you know for the current times we're in but i wish you all well uh, both personally and for your businesses and organizations and thank you for attending today and um enjoy the rest of the day the sun is shining thank you very much indeed